I kind of doubt that my microphone's gonna pick this up, but I don't think I've mentioned, I can hear the creek when I'm sitting out at the house. The creek's kind of down there-ish, I think. Hold on. I had to like make sure I was looking at the right thing. Yeah, I can be sitting out here in the morning having my tea and I can hear the running water from up here. It's faint, but it's really good. It's my favorite part for sure of being up here so far. Running water has just always been really important to me. Um, is there something special about being around like a nice stream, creek, running water? Some people love lakes, some people love oceans. I mean, I like both of those a lot, but for me, my favorite is definitely like a little river, creek, stream, gurgling, babbling, that sort of situation. All right, I want to talk about black walnut for a second here. Uh, it's one of my favorite trees to work with, one of my favorite trees to be around, definitely one of my favorite things to forage. Just all around, I love black walnut trees. But I want to talk about something that comes up a lot whenever I bring up black walnut, whether I'm in a group in person or just speaking on the internet. The topic that always comes up is jungalone, which is a compound produced by black walnuts, mostly in the roots, although it's produced in some amounts in most parts of the tree. It's kind of concentrated more in the root zone. And it's a compound that in the lab has a inhibiting effect on other plants. In other words, it can be shown in a lab that this compound prevents other plants from growing. It can actually, it can stunt them, it can harm them. It can in some cases even kill the other plants, but it certainly can slow them down. Again, this is in the lab. Now you just saw me panning around to some black walnut trees here where there's obviously a lot of other plants growing in the vicinity and in the root zone of these black walnuts. And that's kind of what I want to talk about today is that this whole black walnut alleliopathy, however you pronounce that word, this situation with jungle own, it's not entirely false, but it's largely overstated and it's not well understood, I think, by most folks. You see, in nature, there's a huge variation in how much jungle own is released and how fast, this is the important part, how fast jungle own is able to be broken down in the soil, right? So here's an example. We're underneath in this grove, there's four big black walnut trees. There's this one, this one, this one, and this one. Okay, and underneath, I don't know exactly what that bush is, but whatever that landscaping shrub, that's right in the root zone. There's something down here, some sort of shrub. There's a really healthy pear tree right here. A nice healthy chestnut. Maybe I shouldn't call these exceptionally healthy, but they're definitely in good health. They're, they're, they're happy trees, right? There's no very uh, glaring signs of issues, right? There's grasses and other perennials and annuals growing underneath of the trees, right? Have some vetch coming up, more black walnut seedlings. Can you see this? I point this out not to say that you can grow anything under a black walnut or that things always get along well with black walnuts, but there's a lot of plants that have no issues being around black walnuts, or if there is an issue, it's so little that it's not really perceivable to me. And it's important to me to say that because I, I encounter folks often who will say you can't grow anything under black walnuts, you know, don't plant anything anywhere near black walnuts, it's a horrible idea, they'll kill everything, it's just not accurate. It's not entirely false, right? They do produce jungle own. This can have a negative effect on other plants in the vicinity, but it's just rare to observe that in nature and it's easy to observe it in the lab. This has been well studied, although it's not talked about very often in, you know, gardening circles. My uh, lips are a little bit chapped and bothering me. I need to get some chapstick and probably also get hydrated. Anyway, black walnut, less than 10 feet away some sort of raspberry or blackberry, right? I don't know what all of these plants are. Some of you probably do. You know, there's definitely Virginia creeper coming up in here. There's a pokeweed, there's some dandelions, all sorts of other stuff, that fake mock strawberry, you know, that thing that makes those little tasteless red berries. It's a European plant. Here's that Virginia creeper going up. Never afraid to plant native trees, native perennials, even native annuals uh, near black walnut. I've never experienced any issue. I absolutely have not tried every combination, right? So I'm not saying that every plant, every native plant can work with black walnut, but for the most part, I don't worry about it. Some sort of native grape, poison ivy, which is native, although can be a nuisance, right? You know, it might not be a good idea. I don't know that I would ever plant my annual garden directly under a black walnut tree, but 
I don't often plant my annual garden in the shade if I can help it anyway of any tree, but you know, the one thing that seems to be, I haven't, I guess I haven't tried this a whole lot on my own, but the one thing that seems to be more legit in this whole discussion is that, you know, tomatoes and squash and those sorts of things are often talked about as not doing well under black walnuts. I think there's probably some truth to that, you know, the annual garden under the black walnut, maybe not the best idea, but hey, if you've tried it and it's worked, let me know. Maybe one of these days I'll get around to actually trying it for myself so I can know. I've mostly experimented with native plants and perennials under black walnuts. Anyway, uh, I hope this doesn't come off as super dismissive. You know, if you've had an experience where you put in a lot of work and planted some stuff, happened to be under a black walnut and, you know, they all died or you just had, had a negative outcome and you think that that was partly or entirely because of the black walnut, you know, I'm not trying to say that your experience is invalid right like if that's what you experienced um that's your experience and that's valid and like i said the jungle owned thing is real it's just not as common or as severe as is often touted doesn't mean it doesn't ever happen but i think a lot of the times you know especially like folks like myself i'm still relatively new to to growing plants i mean i've been doing this nursery thing for several years and gardening for several years now since about uh 2020 and i got you know i gardened quite a bit as a young kid and then i fell, fell out of it for a while so it's not like i'm coming from zero experience but still even with that like the amount of plants that have died on my watch in the past three or four years silly all right i think this is working i was having some issues with storage on my iphone here getting full because i talk so much and make so many of these videos anyway um anyway if you want to get good at growing plants, you know, you're going to have to watch a lot of plants die. You got to try a lot of different things. Some things are going to work well, some are not. And you have to learn from those failures. And sometimes it's stuff that you did directly. Sometimes it's just nature taking its course. You know, the cutworms came in and cut down some of your seedlings or the rabbit got under your fence or whatever. Sometimes it's things that are more directly your fault, like overwatering or underwatering or planting seeds too deep or too shallow or not using enough. You know, there's like a million different things that can go right or wrong. And this whole black walnut toxicity thing is talked about a lot. It's a very common thread that you'll hear people talk about on Facebook groups and gardening groups. And so I think that sometimes what's happening, again, not every time, but I think sometimes what's happening is that somebody has a failure. It's upsetting when that happens. And they hear from someone who they trust, whose opinion they value, who says, oh, it's because of this black walnut toxicity. You've got a black walnut nearby. It's impossible to grow anything near them. That's what happened. Maybe that's the case, maybe it's not. Maybe it was just something went wrong, something else went wrong, and uh, the black walnuts were blamed for it. Anyway, that's just my thoughts on it. I am definitely not the expert. I don't have all the answers. I'm, you know, as with everything, I'm always learning and adapting based on new information and experiences. There's a lot of black walnuts here. That's a, this whole crown, that's a big black walnut. That's one here, that's one right there. We got a lot of black walnuts here, most of the trees along that creek line, our black walnut, there's a few sycamore in there. I love them, I'm really excited about them. Some people hate them. Like I said, one of my favorite trees, and uh, you know, definitely this fall, as we get into the foraging season, I'll be making more content on how I do that whole process. That's a, the main use that I have for black walnuts. Just to briefly, if you're not super familiar with black walnuts and their uses, the timber is actually very valuable as well. It's one of the most valuable timber resources on the East Coast. It's a rot resistant, very dense hardwood. It's very beautiful, used for furniture a lot. I like eating the nuts, right? I love the taste of black walnuts. It's this unique thing. If you've never had it before, it's like really, it's like so much better than the store-bought English walnuts, in my opinion. There are medicinal compounds in the tree as well, especially in the husk. You can make medicine out of them. You can make a dye out of the black walnut husk. There's all sorts of, you know, this is not a fully comprehensive list, but it's a really wonderful tree. And I felt like making this video partly just to share my experience, but also partly, you know, because I'm so close to these trees, I do get somewhat bothered when uh, I feel like they're demonized a little bit out of proportion in some groups. So I wanted to put this video out there for anyone who maybe wants to work with black walnuts, but has been, has shied away from it based on various advice. Maybe consider revisiting that, maybe explore working with black walnuts in new ways probably don't commit your whole garden to be under a black walnut tree but try some stuff out see what works several hours later now i can't believe it took me this long to think of this but uh 
another cool thing about the walnuts is they leaf out really late. So if you've got spring ephemerals or if you have any sort of plants that you want to catch some of that early season light before the black walnuts wake up, that is a pretty cool uh, situation. You can see this pear is fully leafed out and has been for several weeks. Same with this chestnut. And the walnuts are just now starting to put on their leaves. In that way, they're really good shade trees around houses as well because in the cooler part of the year, you know, they, they lose their leaves a little early and they gain them late. And so, you know, as far as shade near a structure, you get that sunlight for the full span of the cooler season. And then as it gets warm, that's when you get your shade. Although I will say the shade that they provide is somewhat dappled. It's not a super dense shade. But still definitely a good shade for, you know, shading a house, yourself, livestock, that sort of thing. Very welcome shade in the growing season. That dappled shade is uh, helpful if you're trying to grow grasses in between rows of black walnut trees. I know there have been some studies done on, I believe, wheat or some sort of, you know, perennial grasses in an agricultural setting with alleys or rows of black walnuts in between alleys of grass. Uh, I believe I heard about this study through the Savannah Institute, although I don't think it was something they did in-house. So something certainly you could look up. I might try to link something about it in the description. It's also interesting to me that black walnut is picked on so much because plenty of other plants produce compounds that can inhibit the growth of plants around them. This is actually kind of a common thing. Black walnut is always touted as an extreme example of this, but it's much more common than you would think. There's actually a lot of plants that do this in nature. My guess, kind of my gut feeling, is that in nature, a lot of these trees, a lot of these plants, they can produce these compounds to um, protect themselves and kind of carve out their own little space in their root zone. But in nature, we know that trees really get along and cooperate a lot. So they might have these compounds to keep their little home safe, but they trade resources with their neighbors quite frequently. The trees are a community. Plants really survive and thrive in a community much better than on their own. So here's the example I wanted to show you. Um, you can see right there is a little tomato start and a squash. I just hit them really hard with the hose. They're kind of leaning over to one side. And uh, they're in a one of these little grow crates. Guess what's in there with them? Three foot tall black walnut. They definitely at this point have roots into the black walnut root area and they're growing. So we'll see how much longer they grow. I'm not going to weed them. I'm going to leave them and see. Uh, this is you know, I didn't plan this. They just volunteered there. Kind of a good experiment. You know, if those tomatoes don't do well at all, might very well be because of the black walnut. But if they, you know, if they do okay, if they thrive, um, I don't know. It'd just be interesting. It's just another point of data. I don't think it proves or disproves the situation. It's just an interesting data point to consider. You know, another thing worth mentioning with this specific example of the chestnut, the pear, and the black walnut is there may be ways that these black walnuts are influencing these other trees that we can't see with the naked eye, right? Uh, there's a lot of examples of what that could look like. You know, maybe this chestnut and this pear are not as productive as they could be if they were on their own. Although, of course, part of that could just be they're planted really close. You know, this chestnut is really within the shade region of this black walnut same with the pear the pear less so but still you know there's definitely walnut branches above it it's kind of hard to tell right now so if we are seeing you know less productivity less fertility whatever it could just be from shade like there's no you know it's very difficult to rule out but it just felt worth mentioning that um even though these trees are coexisting it's it's you know it's very simple to say the black walnuts are not killing these other trees and other plants they're absolutely all growing together and seemingly doing fine but that doesn't mean that there's no influence from the black walnut right they're, they're definitely it is possible that they're influencing these plants in certain ways maybe negative through the jungle and also maybe positive you know maybe they're actually playing along better than we think i, I don't really know um i think the system looks reasonably happy to me anyway I felt like sharing some of my observations on these interactions and some of the opinions that I've kind of formed based on those observations. I don't have all the data. You know, this is just a snapshot in time, how I'm feeling. It really seems to me like in a lot of groups, this whole black walnut alleliopathy thing is, is overstated. It's almost like a myth at this point in some groups, I would say. Uh, and, and again, 
I, I'm trying to have a balanced view. Like there are instances I'm sure where the jungle on is an issue for other plants. Like I'm not trying to say it never happens. Uh, I hope I'm not repeating myself too much, but just want to present you guys with an example of in, in this environment, what's going on and some thoughts to think about. And then you can kind of form your own opinion. You don't have to work with black walnut trees if you don't want to, uh, but I want to empower folks that do want to work with black walnut not to be afraid to try it just because a bunch of people on the internet said, that's silly, it's not going to work. Um, it very well, very well may work. So if you're interested in, you know, playing with black walnuts, I say go for it. Check out the house all the way over there from this elevation on top of this hill. Definitely didn't have this type of elevation at the farm. At the farm being down in North Carolina. This is also a farm.